Dear Santa, my name is John O. This Christmas I am 420, 69 years old, and my favorite color is the blood of my enemies. And I love to play Yu-Gi-Oh! I have been very good this year. I hope you will bring me a deck so powerful it will make Nightmare look like Shardy. Here's a picture of me sitting on top of a throne after I beat all the bad people in Egypt. Make sure you say hi to the Shadow Realm for me in the North Pole. Merry Christmas, Santa. Here is the amazing deck Santa gave us for Christmas. I can't wait to show it off to all my friends. I'm going to be the strongest duelist in the playground. Kicking off our adventure, we pay a visit to Simon. As this is a Christmas special, we're going to ask each and every player what they asked Santa for this year. Simon's wish this year was to be let back into the palace, so he no longer has to stay blue from frostbite. Well, Frosty the Blue Man, you're just going to have to see if you're on Santa's naughty or nice list. Getting back to Forbidden Memories mechanics, all of the cards in the deck Santa gave us are obtainable legitimately, depending on what type of version of the game you are playing. I'll be explaining the way you obtain each card as we progress through the duels in this game, but for now, we're on to our final turn. Attacking with Magician of Black Chaos, we whittle down Simon's life points with a Gate Guardian and a Black Skull Dragon. We win, and Simon goes down. Simon exclaims that he taught us well, but I'm pretty sure Santa gave us this deck, but nonetheless, take whatever accolades you can, you blue boy. We head down to the duel arena to say hi to our friends. The next player is Tina. Tina wishes to no longer be kidnapped during each challenge we play. That's definitely a big wish to Santa. Let's hope for your sake, you're on the nice list. Looking at this duel, the first card we summon is Black Skull Dragon. Black Skull Dragon is obtainable legitimately via fusion. Of course, you'll need to have obtained a Red-Eyes Black Dragon and a Summon Skull to do it. If you want this monster as a standalone card, you'll need to obtain it from a pocket station using the Obtain from Infrared function. I believe that is option 3 on the device, but don't quote me from memory. With our final attack with a Skeletal Dragon, Tina goes down and her S rank is a Sinister Serpent. Moving on to the next player, we're up against Jusel, otherwise known as Villager 1 in this game. The name Giselle came from Yu-Gi-Oh! Falsebound Kingdom. We asked Giselle what his wish to Santa was this year. Giselle wishes to not be skipped during speedruns. Hmm, I think that might be a tough one from Santa, but I guess if you're on the nice list he might be able to make something happen. Getting back to the duel, the first card we attacked with was Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth. As seen in my insect video, the only way to legitimately obtain this card is via Pocket Station, and again, you'll need to use the Obtain via Infrared function. Giselle is defeated, and the card he drops for us is a Skull Servant. The next player in the duel arena is Malai Ruka. Again, he is another player from Yu-Gi-Oh! The False Bound Kingdom. In Forbidden Memories, he's known as Villager 2. Malai Ruka this year wants people to not treat him like a kid this Christmas. So hopefully he's been a good boy and made it to Santa's nice list. He is, however, very stupid. As is most of the other early to mid game AIs, if you set a card in face down attack position in turn 1, there is a chance that they will attack it. And wow, that was a quick duel. Villager 2 goes down and he gives us a dark shade. We now move on to Villager 3, who doesn't actually have a name. Based on the comments from the last video, I think we'll call him Greg for today. Old Greg wishes people would stop making fun of his age. That's going to be a bit difficult, given that you were probably there to witness Santa's birth. Oh well. Fortunately for the old fella, we drew a dead hand turn 1. We still decided to flex off with a Raigeki, because I like that card. I guess we'll mention how to obtain multiple copies of Raigeki in this game. You have a 50-50 chance of obtaining Raigeki in your starting deck. If you choose not to trade in this game, more copies of Raigeki can be obtained by getting an S or A tech rank against all three Setos, both Haishans, Ocean Mage, and lastly, Shardy. And old Greg goes down, and he gives us a Rock Ogre Grotto. Waving goodbye to everyone in the duel arena, we leave to watch the Christmas carols in the town square. It's a bit strange to say that out loud, because this game is based in the Amenhotep dynasty. That's about a thousand plus years before Jesus or Santa existed. Anywho number one, plot holes aside, we witness a friendly game of cards between John01 and Seto1. Seto is being a bad sport, 
Gloating about his win to everyone. That's not a very nice thing to do. Don't worry, Jono. I'll play a game of cards with you. Off to the duel arena we go. Before dueling our blonde bogan friend, let's ask him what he wants for Christmas this year. Jono wants Seto to stop stealing his lighter and to stop calling him a singy but brine. Yes, that was a reference to the first dinosaur video. Unfortunately, Jono, you are a bit of a Siggy butt brain. Fusing a monster, he attacked directly into perfectly ultimate Great Moth. That's a very Siggy butt brain move, my dude. Nonetheless, be a good boy, and we'll see what Santa and Jono can do about this. The da -da 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 intensifies, and our drop from Jono is Haniwa. We do not shove our victory in Jono's face and call them a scrub. Attendees at YCS, take note of this behavior. Seto 1 walks in from table 20 down to table 300, looking for another easy win. Seto, you're being very naughty. What was your wish to Santa? Seto wants to hold on to a long shiny rod, so he can add a number 3 to his name. Strange request, but you do you. With your current behavior, Santa might not listen to you. In an act of early retribution, we punish Seto with both a Gate Guardian and a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. See? It's not so fun doing that to people, is it? Anywho number 2, on the first day of Christmas, my true love sent to me a Raigeki for the win and an attack for game. Seto 1 is defeated and he dropped us a winged cleaver. Having won all our duels, we wish our friends a Merry Christmas and start making our way back home to catch some doorstep carols. A little fun fact about Australia, we don't actually have those. At most there might be carols at a park. Making our way back to the palace, Simon escorts us inside and begins drafting a letter. Dear Jafar, you are a bitch high mage. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Dear Jafar, you are a bitch ass high mage. I heard they hide extra security at the shrine to protect you. That's a bitch move Jafar. I'm coming for that ass again until you pay what you owe. Sincerely yours, Simon the Stalker. With his letter finished, Simon hears some knocking at the door. He opens it thinking that it's just Carolers. Unfortunately, it's Jafar. Jafar has found out that he is on Santa's naughty list, so he's taken that as a free pass to cause as much havoc as possible. Pretty sure murder and property damage gets you more than just coal in your stockings, but you do you. Rumbling occurs and we meet Fizdis. She wishes that people would remember her name. I would have gone for wishing to survive this invasion, but your legacy is your own. Running outside, Seto confronts us, looking to see if we have that shiny rod he's looking for. We're interrupted by Frosty the Blue Man, who hands us the Millennium Pazusi again from the ritual run. Hope you watch that thing. Leaving the scene, we're confronted by Jafar. He's trying to do a murder on us. I think somebody needs their moop drive checked. Now here's the million dollar question. What did Jafar want for Christmas? The thing that Jafar seeks cannot be put into words, but based on our prior interactions with him, we can hazard a guess that it's something big. Getting back to the duel, we power up Magician of Black Chaos. Magician of Black Chaos can be summoned using Dark Magic Ritual. How do you get Dark Magic Ritual? Only via Pocket Station. And I think only through the Lottery function, unless you get lucky with Infrared. To get him as a standalone card, you need to combine Dark Magic Ritual, Blast Juggler, Wind Dragon of the Fortress number 1, and Dark Magician, using the Pocket Station Communication Fusion feature. But enough of that, we just beat Jafar. Now the game wants us to lose this duel, but through the power of Millennium Christmas, we can jump cut straight to Simon, channeling his inner Rhea to drop a Riptide on Jafar. Unfortunately, we broke the Pazusi. Who knew that slamming people on the ground would have such an adverse effect on our property? We're both sucked into purgatory, so we decide to take a break and check in on what's happening in the present. Phasing into our Elton itself, we're saddened to hear that our Santa deck is locked in the past, but through the magic of Christmas and that stolen credit card from our zombie run, we're able to replenish our deck from Troll and Toad, after paying the exorbitant prices it takes to get things shipped to Australia. Anywho number 3, time to make everyone in this tournament a shardy level threat. And what better way to start things off than with our good friend Rex Raptor, and by friend, I mean general inconvenience. Now, for the bulk of the duels in this tournament, we're going to set a monster in face down attack position. Like I mentioned before, there is a good chance that the opponent will do the stupid and attack right into our behemoth. The great thing about that is that we can basically end the duel in two turns. As we see now, attack once with Media Black and attack two with Media Black. Rex goes down. 
and the card he drops for us is a little D. There's an homage to our dinosaur video. Getting back to the card shop, we're now prepared to face off against Weevil Underwood. Now for this short blue head menace, we're going to use the same strategy that we employed against Rex, by setting our monster in face down attack position. If he takes the bait, he's attacking into an ultimate dragon. That's going to deal some serious damage, so let's hope he does it. Success. His strongest card against my strongest card, and I came out on top. Thanks Santa. And bam, right there we have another two turn win. I think it takes just as long to introduce the duelist as it does to defeat them. Nonetheless, Weevil drops us a blade fly. And we return once more to the card shop. If you're noticing that I'm not hitting the save button, your perception is correct. I have not saved our game once. I believe in the Christmas spirit, and therefore I believe that we will not lose any duels. Skipping our normal strategy, we decide to power up a Metal Zoa to 4,500 attack. Response? Absolutely cowering in fear, just the way we like it. Now whilst we have a Metal Zoa on the field, let's go over how to get it. Metal Zoa can be fused into by using a Metal Morph and a Zoa. It can also be obtained via an S power or an A power rank drop from Sebek. That's of course if your deck is actually strong enough to do it by that point of the game. Nonetheless, we reach our final turn and Mai goes down. She drops us a Bean Soldier. I actually don't think that I introduced Mai. Oh well, doesn't matter. On to Bandit Keith. Bandit Keith is our final opponent in the preliminary qualifiers. We revert back to our original strategy for this duel. That means we place the monster in face down attack position. Fingers crossed that he attacks into it. I'd love another two turn game. Summon, face down, love it. Happy days, he attacks into it and we got a Guardian Star boost as well. Chef's kiss on that damage. With our stupidly boosted field, we attack the game and defeat Keith. And his drop is, da -da -da -da, come on, a Yami. We return to the card shop, say hello to Taya and initiate another cutscene. We meet up with Joey, who's trying to explain to us what Kwanzaa is, when we're rudely interrupted by Shardy. Listen mate, I'm trying to have a conversation with my friend. No, I'll not grab out and touch you. Nope, not happening. Mmm, okay. Maybe just a little poke. Oh crap, how did we get here? Our past self informs us that all reincarnations of him are on Santa's nice list. Being completely baffled by that specific instance of atavism, we're handed some Monopoly get out of jail free cards. Through the magic of Christmas, these cards absolve us of any repercussions for the absolute belting we're going to give these next four opponents. So let's get right into it. First opponent in the octagon is Shadi. Now say it with me kids. Shadi is a pushover of a duelist. If you lose to him, you suck at this game and you should immediately stop playing right here, right now. In a seemingly intimidating move, Shardy fuses three cards together. Unfortunately, the monster he spits out was only 1600 attack. Seriously, push over. So we power up a Magician of Black Chaos with Megamorph and Bright Castle. I guess whilst we're on the subject, let me tell you how to get Megamorph. Megamorph is an S-Tech or A-Tech drop from Pegasus, both Hyshens and Dark Knight. Truthfully, before I started these challenge runs, actually had no idea how to get the card. Each iteration of this game I played was Mega Morphless. All things aside, we win and we got an Aqua Snake. Mm. Being given our Kris Kringle present from Shardy, we head back to the card shop and prepare for our next opponent. The next player we're up against is Yami Bakura. Now, I've mentioned the word Pocket Station a few times when recounting the method to obtain certain cards. But what is it? You can find a live demo of me using one in the Sea Serpent video, so I suggest you check that out. The Pocket Station is a PlayStation peripheral released in Japan. It is an upgraded memory card that features a screen. It lets you install mini games which when played can help add to the experience of certain PS1 games. Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories is one of those games. The game software can only be installed using the Japanese version of the game and it only works on Japanese copies of the game. Unless you use the workaround I did in the Sea Serpent video. Again. I suggest you check that out. And with my timing absolutely perfect, Bakura goes down, we get a Lunar Queen Elysium, and we're gifted with a Millennium Ring. Thanks Bakura! Now we move on to Pegasus. This game has some advanced mechanics in its programming that are not widely known to the player base. One of these concepts I think is called the Millennium Eye, which means that certain opponents are able to see your face down cards and even your hand. I'm not fully across this, but from my recollection, Duel Master K, Pegasus, 
the Majors and the Final Six all have this ability. Don't even get me started on the 17 card hands and card morphing. I'll explain that when I get to the Final Six. That's if I remember it. And yes, they are as bad as they sound. What's not bad, however, is my progress with Pegasus. Attacking with Crab Turtle and again with Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, we win. Da -da 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 -da, and we got a Will Me. Pegasus goes down. He forgot his Kris Kringle present, so he gives us his eyeball instead. That's... nice. Thank you, buddy. Anyone have a Kleenex? Nope. Guess we're moving on. Our next opponent is White Ishizu. Yeah, don't read too much into that one. This game has effectively chucked a reverse Disney on this character. We resume our normal strategy of placing cards face down. The one thing I can compliment about this opponent is that she's pretty good at fusing into Aqua Monsters and was at least smart enough not to attack into us. Given that our first card summon was Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, I'll recap how to obtain this card legitimately. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon can be ritual summoned in this game using the Ultimate Dragon Ritual, which can be won by s Teching set 3 I'll have to continue this in Duel 2, because White Ashizu goes down, and we win a Water Magician. In a Kris Kringle act of lavishness, she gives us a necklace. She is that one person amongst your group of friends that always has to show off how much money they have. Thank you regardless, and we're on to our next opponent. Final match of the modern times is against Kaiba. And how fitting that we're continuing our discussion on Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Now, I've mentioned how to summon Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon via Ritual, but what if you wanted Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon as a standalone card? Well, to get it, you'd need to use the Pocket Station's Communication Fusion feature. The four cards that are needed for this fusion is the Ritual card, followed by three Blue Eyes. And with that epic timing, Kaiba goes down, gives us a Mystic Horseman of all things, and hands us over a Rod as his Kris Kringle present. Having finished our fun in the present, the Christmas spirit leaves Yugi and makes its way back to the Pharaoh in the puzzle. With the screen fading back out to white, we pick up where we left off. Simon, I have some good news. You finally get to stay inside out of the cold. However, because of that earlier wrestling move you pulled on Jafar, you're going to have to sit in timeout in the puzzle for a bit. Exiting the Pazusi, we're back in Egypt. Time to recreate that drawing we sent to Santa. Off to the King's Valley we go. We say hello to Sedin. Sedin's wish to Santa was to be told exactly what he's supposed to be guarding. Well, if you're a good boy, either me or Santa will be able to help out with that. For now, let's head back to the palace. Mage soldier, long time no see, since you know, the last time we spoke, you offed my family. Tired to lay down some smackdown. Don't worry, Santa said we can. We have get out of jail free cards. I'm not actually sure if the face down attack position trick works with a mage soldier, but we tried out nonetheless. Well, he's about as smart as Weevil. Emptying out our hand, we summon out Sengenjin, which is great given that I never got a chance to use him during our Beast Warrior video. And apologies in advance for that video, things got a bit... Weird. But oh well. We fire off a Rageki for the win, and we attack the game with Sengenjin. We won. Da -da 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 -da, and we got a Skull Red Bird. Wing Beast Run win. Searching the room, we reclaim a map, and make our way back to the King's Valley. We're about to make a very happy Sedin. Hey buddy, remember us? Look at this. It's a map. Sedin, do the thing. Opening the chamber, we stare in awe at the night sky hoping to catch a glimpse of Santa's reindeer. Seto snuck in looking for Santa's stash of presents. He's really obsessed over that rod, isn't he? Finding nothing here, he storms off in a huff. Okay, Sedin, it's time to say goodbye. Have fun guarding the ruins. With the mages now open to us, it's time we pay a visit to the Sea Shrine. Here we say hello to the Ocean Mage. Ocean Mage asked Santa this year to no longer be stranded on this island. Hmm, fair request, but riddle me this. Why are you called an ocean mage if this is a sea shrine? They are similar yet different things. Seas are partially enclosed by land, oceans are not, and you my friend are definitely a sea man. Oh well, with all things said, we add our first stick figure to the pile. Waving goodbye to the sea man, we stroll up to Sekmenton. Sekmenton's wish to Santa this year was to learn how to swim. Having lied on his resume, Sekmenton has been stuck on this island since he was stationed here. Well, lying is not a very nice thing to do, so you better hope that Santa puts you on his nice list. In a galaxy brain move, Sekmenton sets a spell card. Well, looks like this one's going to be a two turn win. Powering up our gate guardian, we attack once, and we attack twice. 
Sekmenton goes down, duh, 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 and we got a catapult turtle. Hmm, maybe you could use that to get off the island. Oh well. Obtaining more presents, we board a raft and leave the island. Off to the mountain shrine we go. Mountain Mage's wishes to Santa this year was for people to stop making fun of his ginormous chin. I am very sorry to hear about that. Whilst I've made the trip, can I have your autograph, Nathan Cleary? Hmm, guess he didn't like that one. Actually fusing into something decent, we're very thankful that we have some strong monsters on our side. I guess since he's the one that summoned the Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon, let's review how to obtain one. Aside from the bajillion fusions out there to make Twin Head, it is obtainable as a standalone card using either a card password or from having it drop from both Hyshens, Labyrinth Mage, Nightmare, Seto 2 or Seto 3. All at an S power rank of course. With Chin Mage out of the way, that's another stick figure on our pile and we make our way up the mountain to Atenza. Atenza's wish to Santa this year was for Uber Eats to update their routes to deliver up mountains. Guess that's one of the drawbacks of being a high mage out here. By summoning a monster in face down attack position, we seem to be triggering the mages to set down spells and traps. I don't know why they're doing it, but I'm not going to complain. With a two monster attack, this duel is done before it's even begun. Winning a punished eagle, a tenzer gets added to our stick figure pile. Remembering that we have friends in this universe, we make our way to the duel arena. Hey guys, you miss me? Of course you did. I'm the main character after all in this story. Being taken to an underground arena, we get to experience the Christmas spirit again. It's a similar feeling of being that one guy at locals with a meta deck, challenging a bunch of 10 year olds with blue eyes structure decks. Peak community balance right there. Setting a gate guardian in face down attack position, we seem to be tricking all the AIs of doing the same thing, setting a spell and trap card. Unfortunately, we don't win this in two turns, but I'm not worried one bit. Jono's response to us for turn 2 is setting a monster in face down defense position and wishing that he never accepted the terms of this duel. Destroying his red eyes black dragon, we attack him once more with gate guardian and Jono goes down. Don't worry, he's a good person. He will not be added to our stick figure pile. Moving to the next player, we say hi to Tina too. As the duel loads, you know what strategy we're going to do. We're going to set a monster in face down attack position and let's see how she responds. We get a fusion, it gets summoned, and she attacks right into Black Skull Dragon. Peak AI design right here. I love the speed up. Despite the earlier damage, it's not enough to pull off a two turn win. Oh well, she hasn't really got anything to respond to us with. Putting her last card in defense position, we summon the god that is the Crab Turtle, and attack her for game with Media Black Dragon. We win! And we got a Monster Eye. Saying goodbye to our friends once more, we're off to add more stick figures to our pile. Making a round trip back to the duel arena, it's time to take on Seto 2. Walking back into the arena, we find out that Tina 2 has been kidnapped. Now this wouldn't have happened if she believed more in the Millennium Christmas spirit. Off to the Labyrinth we go. Challenging the Labyrinth Mage, his wish to Santa this year was to know the location of his mouth. Odd request, but you do you. Seeing as we summon the Cosmo Queen, Let's go over how to obtain the card legitimately. Cosmo Queen can be summoned forth via a ritual, using the card Cosmo Queen's Prayer. For those of you that watched my ritual video, you would have seen this happen a lot. For those wanting the card as a standalone monster, you'll need to use a pocket station. You'll need to use the communication fusion to combine Queen of Autumn Leaves, Queen's Double, Princess of Sarugi, and Cosmo Queen's Prayer. So with that quick bit out of the way, Labyrinth Mage goes down and he drops us a Fiend Sword. Through the magic of Christmas, we're able to skip right through the Labyrinth. Entering the Vast Shrine, we encounter Jafar, Seto and Tina too. Shaking from fear from his last encounter, Jafar runs deeper into the Shrine. By holding the hands of a lady for the first time, Seto has evolved into Seto too. Confident in his new abilities, he thinks he can defeat us in a duel. Despite this AI possessing the Millennium Eye function, we have successfully managed to fake out Seto. Perfectly ultimate Great Moth is weaker than his Gate Guardian. So at some point during the attack sequence, the AI was faked out and decided not to attack into us despite knowing what the card on the field was. Don't ask me how this works, I'll let the smarter people explain this in the comments. Taking out Seto 2's Gate Guardian with our Black Skull Dragon, we attack him again for game with our Media Black Dragon. We win! and Old Mate drops an Unsatsu. By defeating Seto, we close off the rest of this encounter. 
Going back to the Dool Arena, we wish our friends a Merry Christmas and set off on our adventure once more. Since we're already here, we go ahead and take on the Meadow Shrine. It's the closest one to us. The Meadow Mage asked Santa this year for Kapura to stop eating the other lower mages. Hmm, we'll have to see how that goes. It's important Kapura gets to eat all the people he wants, otherwise Santa won't have a chance of eating cookies and milk when he visits. Getting back to the duel, this AI displayed the same dumb behavior as the other mages. By setting a card in face down attack position, he decided to set a spell and trap card. Again, no idea why he did this, but he dropped us a Komori dragon and we're on our way to Kapura. Kapura's letter to Santa was very simple. Kapura simply wishes that the Christmas ham comes with the rest of the pig, not just the leg. Is that too much to ask? Being blinded by hunger and falling for our face down card, he sets a spell and trap. Now I couldn't remember if he had widespread ruins, so I fire off a Harpy's Feather Duster just in case. I guess while we're on it, Harpy's Feather Duster is actually a fusible card. It can be obtained by fusing most wing beast monsters with either Bear Trap or Machine Conversion Factory. I'll continue part 2 in the next duel. For now, oh my god he dropped the Garuzis, are you kidding me? Sorry, I digress. Kapura just dropped the card which took me a stupid amount of time to obtain in my last video. So being blinded with rage, we attack the next shrine. On to the Forest Mage. The Forest Mage wishes that he didn't have to wear a mask, as COVID does not exist in Millennium Egypt. Setting a card face down, we pick up where we left off with that Feather Duster info. Outside of fusions, Feather Duster can be obtained as an S-Tech drop from Dark Knight, both Haishans, Atenza, Kapura, Sekmenton, Ishizu, Kaiba, Mai, Nightmare, Pegasus, Seto 2 and 3, and Yami Bakura. Wow, that took a while. Encountering Anubisius, he voluntarily tells us his wish to Santa. He wishes that the bandages on his lower torso didn't show the outline of his junk. Um, you could, you know, not wear bandages, but you do you. Attacking into our ultimate dragon with his great moth, it's kind of evident why this guy has so many bandages. Nonetheless, we reach our final turn and attack the game. We win. And we got a Guardian of the Labyrinth, and this guy gets added to our stick figure pile. We are actually up to our last shrine, so let's cross over the whole of Egypt and make our way to the Desert Shrine. Lower Desert Mage looks a bit disheveled, and his wish to Santa this year was for him to no longer work for the pinwheel of all mages. That's rough, buddy. Well, hopefully we'll put you out of your misery very soon. Noticing that we have a Blackluster Soldier in our hand, let's cap off how we go about obtaining this card. Blackluster Soldier can be summoned forth using the Blackluster Ritual. You must also offer up a Beaver Warrior, Guy the Fist Knight, and a Karibo. As a standalone card, he is also obtainable via Pocket Station, by combining those same cards using the Communication Fusion feature. With our last attack defeating the Desert Mage, we add him to our pile of stick figures. We are on to the lucky last mage, that is Martus. What was your wish to Santa this year? Martus wishes that Forbidden Memories had stronger zombies and dinosaurs, so they could actually take advantage of his Wasteland Field spell. You know what, that's a fair argument there. So getting back to the duel and the mechanics, let's cap over Gate Guardian. Gate Guardian can only be summoned both via Ritual and as a standalone card using the Pocket Station. What does that even mean? Well in this game, there is a card called Gate Guardian Ritual. You can only obtain it by using the Communication Fusion on the Pocket Station, by consuming all three Gate Guardian pieces. And that's just to get the Ritual. I'll continue this in the next duel. Because Mardus goes down, he gives us a Mars Sorcerer, and that's another stick figure added to our pile. Pretty fitting drop if you ask me. Time for some S-Tech grinding. Nah, just kidding. Onwards and upwards to the Vast Shrine. Jafar's Vast Shrine comprises of all the kids on Santa's Millennium Naughty List. These kids have been so bad for far too long. It's time to show them the error of their ways. We start off with Sebek and Neku, the worst offenders. They do not believe in Santa and have asked for nothing this Christmas. Now for the rest of these duels, I'm going to try show off the 3D battles for each monster in our deck. Let's hope RNG believes in the spirit of Christmas. By setting a gate guardian in face down attack position, Sebek responds with a powered up metal Zoa. Having some power ups of our own, we beef up our Blackluster Soldier and attack into his metal Zoa. The first 3D battle begins.
Mike will Bay Explosion and we attack his life points directly. Blackluster Soldier Slash Attack is actually pretty fast. Though it is sped up, it does jump cut like that for those wondering. Next we summon out the perfectly ultimate Great Moth. Time for another battle. Poor Metal Zoa is copying at this duel. Landing our final attack with Blackluster Soldier, Sebek goes down. And he drops us a Pendulum Machine. Oofed, I think Konami broke the game when they made those. Imagine having to create a whole nother method of play just to combat something you've released. It's the Yu-Gi-Oh equivalent of the physical special split to stop Psychics running amok. Whilst we set up our field, let me finish off those tips for Gate Guardian. To have it as its own standalone card, you need to repeat the Communication Fusion using the Ritual card plus all three pieces. Oh, and if I didn't mention it before, cards are permanently used up during pocket station fusions, so you actually needed two copies of all the Gate Guardian pieces. Anywho for, here's another 3D battle. Sweet victory right there. We chip away at his life points with Cosmo Queen, and we skip right back to Neku. Drawing into a Magician of Black Chaos, I think it's time we show off that 3D model, since it's a pretty hard card to get in this game. Cards explode and we attack his life points for game. Neku has been defeated, and Old Mate drops us a Reaper of the Cards. Uneven attack point run when? I'm kidding, please don't make me do that. After putting the naughty kids in the corner, we encounter Jafar who recounts that it's been some time since we last met. Yep, whole 32 minutes has elapsed. Very perceptive. We summon the OG that is Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. So whilst we set up, I'm gonna pop off more card drop guides. Starting with the Shadow Spell we have in our hand, you can either get it by fusing two Spellbinding Circles together, or obtain it via Infrared on the Pocket Station. I realised that I stuffed up and forgot to do that last battle in 3D. My bad, but it does give us a chance to summon Sengenjin, and since it's a double KO, we get to see the attacks of both monsters. 3D battle time. Hooray for the double explosion. With an empty field, we attack into Jafar. Redeeming ourselves for that earlier mishap, we summon down a Gate Guardian and kick off a 3D battle with our twin head. We breach the wall and attack directly once more. Response? Okay, that is either a Gate Guardian or a Metal Zoa. Regardless, we're going to kick off a 3D battle with Media Black Dragon. Ah crap, I hit the wrong button. Sorry peeps. Regardless, Jafar goes down, we get a Stone Ghost, and Jafar makes his best impression of one. Seto 3 has finally located the rod and can finally add the number 3 to his name. Exiting the shrine, Seto tells us that he found the chamber which held all of the presents Santa was going to give to the people of Egypt. With the power of his new golden rod, he wishes to steal all the presents for himself. A very Grinch move. It is up to us to save Christmas. And let's hope this time I remember to attack with the square button so we can get a 3D battle. I set down a blue eyes ultimate dragon to counter the one he's inevitably going to throw at us. Let's see, sun, yes, definitely an ultimate dragon. I decide to clear out my hand to make room for more monsters we can 3D battle with. Sacrificing our blue eyes against his, we have a free shot at his life points with perfectly ultimate great moth. Response, summon, okay, we are immediately countered by a gate guardian. Never fear, we have a megamorph and a trihorn dragon as well. 
I missed out on using him as a 3D battle in our ritual run, so let's kick off the animation. Was not expecting the lightning. Sato sets another card that's a moon type. Thankfully, we have another media black dragon. Let's set it as a sun and actually kick off a 3D battle this time. We blow up Gate Guardian with a trusty Spirit Bomb. For those wondering, yes, the attacks do change depending on what Guardian style you pick. Anywho, Raigeki for the win. And we attack the gang with Trihorn Dragon. Seto 3 goes down and he drops us a Megarius Light. Hanging his head in shame, Jafar tries to give Seto the gift of a Christmas shave. Forgetting that he's a teenager, he needs to rethink his Kris Kringle present. Jafar writes a letter to Santa using hieroglyphs. But unfortunately, he's a tad bit dyslexic and accidentally summons Satan instead. The Dark Knight, being well aware of Jafar's shenanigans, feel that Jafar's lump of coal should be put to better use. He promptly sets the High Mage on fire. Hmm, guess it should have came with a warning label. Oh well. Turning his sights on us and our pile of bodies, we show him our get out of jail free cards. These vouchers have prevented our incineration, but regrettably mandate that we must duel for our survival. Let's jump right into things. Drawing two Megamorphs, we are definitely going to summon out our Cosmic Queen. Again, I stuffed up and forgot to include her 3D battle in our ritual video. Let's see if we can redeem it for this match. Dark Knight set a Media Black Dragon. That's fantastic. We have more than enough attack points to take him out. Summoning some extra protection, we attack. Jeez, Kid Boo eat your heart out. Attacking with our ultimate dragon, we pass the turn back to Dark Knight. I don't think we've actually shown off a Blue Eyes ultimate dragon attack, so I think we'll do that next. Summoning the Blue Hydra, we attack into a Cosmo Queen. Cosmo Queen being absolutely placid do sack the way, we land our final attack on Dark Knight's life points. We win a Winged Dragon number 2. Now it's the moment you've all been waiting for, it's the Nightmare Before Christmas. Time for Santa and I to set this monster back to sleep. And of course, try our hardest to finish off the rest of the 3D battles. Let's see what we draw. Da -da 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 -da. Yes. We get the absolute mad lad that is Crab Turtle. Putting down a precautionary blue eyes, I'll inform everyone how you go about getting it as a standalone card. Like with all ritual monsters, you can combine the cards using the communication fusion on the pocket station. You'll need the ritual and the four materials to do so. Enough of that now, let's see this bad boy in action. Giving Mothra the Fist of the North Star, it's no wonder this card is so overpowered. As for the current hand we draw, after seeing Metal Zoa belted so many times, I think it's only fair that we see him attack and defeat something. Even better, it's a Blue Eyes White Dragon. We get to see the 3D model for that too. Oh, and it also drops from Seto 3rd for those wondering. With the White Dragon defeated, we finish off this run with our Crab Turtle. We won, and we get a Machine King. Nightmare goes down, and we have successfully saved Christmas. Walking away from the carnage like the Chad that we are, 
We finally get to sit atop of our throne, with a pile of stick figures laying before us. Thank you Santa, you made my wish come true. Hey everyone, Jono here. Thank you all so much for making it to the end of this video. Wasn't expecting to pull this one out so soon, but hey, it's Christmas and all of you deserve the gift. Before I get into the formalities, I just want to give a super thanks to Adair3327 and LilyLaser666 for your support to this channel. It does not go unnoticed and you have definitely given me that warm fuzzy feeling in my insides. So thank you once again. I'll be looking to kick things off back in 2024 after I settle into the new year. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to stay notified of my next release. If you haven't checked it out already, I've made a Spreadshirt store. You can find a link to it in the video description. Wishing all of you a safe and happy holidays. Hope Santa leaves you all a raigeki for the win in your Christmas stockings. And as always, stay awesome people, and I'll be seeing you all next year.